Hi, so today we're talking about headshot photography and my finish to most of the headshots that I do. So what we're going to be looking at is this image and how we kind of take it from its original state to applying the finish that I, I work with pretty much most of the time with my headshot photography as their kind of main headshot image for their agents. So uh, let's quickly revert uh, to as the image was shot. And the first thing that I'll usually do is basically duplicate the image and then we'll just go through the little bit of the spot healing brush, being careful to just really remove the likes of um, acne kind of spots, kind of time of day, time of the month, whatever it would be, but kind of just getting rid of them. Uh, remember this isn't high-end retouching. Um, this is for the kind of the general portrait photography and the likes of headshots uh, and so on with it and things really. Now I usually leave the natural moles um, on the face um, because they don't really matter because most of the time uh, the makeup that the actors or the extras will basically have are going to be um, kind of all made over anyway. What I will remove though, uh, the next stage is just with the patch tool, I will just soften down any kind of bags um, around the eyes, any tiredness, because once more a simple foundation um, in the makeup room will kind of get rid of most of this anyway. Okay, so things like we've got the little kind of uh, mole here and here and here and here, we've got to really leave those, but we still can go in and get rid of, uh, as I said, the, the soreness, the, red, the redness that you might see within images. So I'm not too bothered about removing any kind of red yet because I'm going to apply a lookup um, to my kind of photographs anyway. Uh, I'll show you what I mean, a specific color now. Um, so once I've got the retouched image, the next thing would be is to add extra lens blur. Now, I usually shoot um, around about f4 on either an 85mm lens or a 50mm lens, depends on what I'm doing. Um, I like a sharpness from the tip of the toe to the eye, which usually means, as you can see here, the ears have already begun to actually go in focus no matter what, but my sharpness is done on the eye no matter what. So to increase the depth of field, kind of blur more, um, I'll just uh, completely duplicate that layer first of all. So if I just, for your sake, just put this into retouched. Yep. And now we're going to duplicate it and this is going to be blurred. Um, now I'd usually be working in the likes of a smart ob object, but in this case uh, the filter I'm going to use won't allow me to use as a smart object as such at present. So I'm just going to go into filter and we're going to go to uh, blur and we're going to use lens blur. If I was to turn this into a smart object for one second, and I come up to the filter blur, you can see the lens blur is not available to me, sorry. Uh, lens blur is not available, so hence we can't um, have it as a smart object. So filter, blur, and we're going to go into the lens blur. And this is going to give me an option of increasing the uh, blur effect on the face. How much do you need? beauties in the eye of the beholder as such, you'll soon kind of get used to uh, the look and the feel that you want to actually bring to your image and things really. So if I push it to the right hand side on the blur focal distance, there's almost nothing applied. Nothing is applied in fact. Uh, if I bring it all the way down to the end, pretty much it's a, a complete kind of bokka uh, effect and things really. So find what is right for you and your style and so on, affecting the distance, radius wise, blades and so on with it. Just have a little play but um, you can see how I'm doing it here. So once I've done that, you can see now the difference as far as the focus depth is concerned. Um, now I, what I want to do is basically add a layer mask. Um, so to do that, I want a black layer mask. So if I press the Alt key while I press the layer mask, a black um, uh, layer mask is achieved straight, straight away. That will obviously kind of hide all the effect. Um, however, uh, really what we want to do is just add a layer mask in so we create 
um, a mask ready to paint back the information. So I want to apply the depth of field focus change in the filter across the whole image. Now what we want to do is pick up a uh, brush and make sure black is on top, yes? If um, you don't know the shortcut already, uh, D is for default, that puts white on top, X behind, uh, black behind. X will then actually just revert these, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do here is a big brush if we kind of looked, it, it's it's very, very soft. It's most soft and it's kind of big going here. And what I'm gonna come across now is the majority of the face spinning up, uh, spilling up into the hairline as well. And then just starting to bring the edge of the face a little bit more back in. And then just bring a little bit of de a detail into the likes of the neckline, just to kind of make it look um, kind of what I call photographic cool, um, just to give it that lovely little kind of look and feel. It, if at this stage you feel that your image is a little bit red, then you can go into the, sat the saturation to reduce some of the color. Uh, I would usually do that with an adjustment layer, hue and saturation, Pick on whatever color you think is kind of the bias that you need to change, in this case red, and we'll just take a little bit out. As it is, as I said, we're going to add a specific color to the image anyway, so that red change is not absolutely essential anyway. So um, now that we've done the kind of the grunt work of the kind of the new change and depth of look, if this was an image as was the natural color that you really like, then pretty much we don't need to do anything else except add a little bit of sharpening to the Im image. And to do that, um, if I just go to shift Control alt e that makes a new layer based on all visible layers. Now what we're going to go up into is sharpen these eyes more. Now they're pretty sharp anyway, but if we just come up into the filter, we come into other and we come into high pass, that's going to add a, a very sharp kind of uh, look to the image. Be careful you don't add in too much. In this case, around about 10 is OK. And then what we need to do is just change the um, blend option here to soft light. Um, so you can see already there's a slight sharpening within the eye here. Can you see it? But I don't want to affect the sharpness across the whole image. I only want to apply it to some elements of the photograph. So in this case, I do need to actually have a black mask, not a white mask. So press the Alt key as you click onto the layer mask at the bottom of the layers panel, and then all of the effect is hidden. Now all I need, need to do, make sure I've got the brush tool, change the size of the brush to what you want it to be. Make sure you've got white on top, so either either press X to swap them or come, come over to the palette and basically put white on the top. Now at this stage, just go into paint in the eye, the eyelashes. I'm going to use a big brush first just on the eyes, then shrink down my brush, then start to bring up some of the eyelashes here, more just on the edge. bringing those sharp a little bit more. I also like to do the uh, lips, the mouth, just the effect. And then pretty much we're done. Um, but as I said at the start, what I really like though is to add a specific style look to the image as well. So all I'm gonna do to finish this off is um, just come over to the adjustments panel and click on the color lookup. And at this stage in the top box, we'll click on it and we're going to come down to Kodak 5218. It gives us a very matte kind of bleached out effect uh, as well. Um, we don't have to add um, the whole percentage of the effect, the opacity. We can kind of reduce it down a little bit more, but it kind of just adds a little bit of a, a stylization to the photographs. Now, obviously, as far as the agents are concerned, they can decide on whether they want the stylized look or not with it, because literally that can be applied at the last minute. And 
pretty much everything that we've got done there except for the initial retouch in can be applied into a action to create um, a pretty much stylized uh, head headshot image to make your photographs kind of stand out that little bit more. So if we just um, we'll put those into uh, Alt key and just click down onto the background. So you can see where we began. Then we retouched the image. Then we added the blur effect. Then we gave a slight different look in hue saturation, reducing some of the red. Then we added in the um, sharpness to the eyes and the lips and a little bit of the nose as well, as well as the eyebrows, of course. Do you know what? Before I forget, though, I should have done just a little bit of the head, the hairline, just to fake that more. There we go, just in there. And then I just added in that uh, lookup table at the end to actually give us a stylized look and things, really. So, fingers crossed, you can see there the diff a difference. If I quickly put those into a group and I switch that group on and off, you can see the original image and the headshot finished image. Hope you enjoyed it. Good luck with it. Cheers.